Where's the kaboom? There was supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom. Evening, folks. Dr. Freedom here with you. Time some Dr. News. News from in around the universe that may or may not affect you in some strange, weird, and inev- inevitable way that could just make you dance around the room and go, Oh, baby. Um, now, <laughs> first off the bat, like I said, sorry it's been a while since I've been online, but like I said, we, it's just, even though 2020 is over, 2021 doesn't seem to be starting out that much better than 2020 did. Stay smiling, you know, buck up and move forward. Now, speaking of moving forward, right here over you know M- on Twitter, Emily Cooks announced next next up in their series of tweet alongs will be Robots of Sherwood. Um, that'll be on the 16th, 7 p.m. That's Greenwich Mean Time, which means basically UK time, I believe. So that you know about 2 p.m. here, and you can tweet along with hashtag Outlaws and Legends and all that. I love this cute little graphic they got going here with Capaldi and the old Robin Hood. That is so cool. That's nice. Well, very well done. But okay, here it comes. Now, the reason why I started off with that cute little cartoon, and that's if I remember to edit it in, is for weeks and weeks and weeks, we had somebody running around in the comments on this channel stating that there had been a plummet in the viewership because of Timeless Children, which we all shook our heads and said there hadn't been an episode at that point before y'all after Timeless Children to say that there'd been a ratings drop in order to make a comparison. And what gets me is you had all these, you know, negative folks running around out there. You know what? I've given up on that. Let them say what they want. The numbers are proving them wrong. And that's all that matters. When you're in the right, you don't have to shout because everybody knows you are. Kind of frightening, ain't it? But because here we go. Get ready for this. Revolution of the Daleks. The official viewing figures are out. Now, as I told you all, if you've been monitoring the channel, the overnights were like, you know, 4.7 you know, million viewers. And a lot of guys were out there going, see, that means it failed. And I'm like, Let, let's read, shall we? Here's what they don't tell you. The final rating takes into account, of course, all those who recorded the program watched it within one week. So this is what the plus sevens. The rating confirms that Doctor Who, as the top-rated BBC One program for New Year's Day, beating EastEnders, which had 4.36 million watching, and Mrs. Brown's Boys with 4.87 million watching. Overall, Doctor Who was second on the day, you know, compared with all the other stuff in the UK. Corey, of course, hopping in to claim the top spot just barely with 6.39. So Doctor Who, with added in the plus sevens, went from 4.7 to 6.25. That's over a million and a half added. In the week after it aired. You see what I mean? It's just ridiculous. Where, where's the plummet? I'm not seeing the big kaboom. What happened? All right, Dr. Who said is likely to finish this week as the eighth most watched program. Same position held by the New Year 2020 program, Spyfall. The most watched program, of course, was Happy New Year Live with 9.92 million watching from you know, London from the start for you. They'll mark the start of 2021. And, of course, that was a live program. Now, <laughs> folks, Strictly Come Butt Licking only got 4.9 million views on Christmas Day. Doctor Who scored 4.7 on New Year's Day. You see, it just amazes the crap out of me. They're still pushing this ratings are plummeting agenda, and they're wrong every time. The only time they were right was, of course, back when 2012, you know, we started, and of course, the last series finished with an average of 5.46 million viewers. But I'm like, well, yeah, well, Capaldi Series 10 finished with an average of 5.5 million viewers for the same damn reason. They took the year off before. And it's kind of sad, too, because if the BBC would quit doing the years off thing, and quit doing split seasons, I think Doctor Who would have a lot more legs to it right now than it has. You know, the, the, it, you know, even the, the even the overnight numbers would still be up. Just a bit more, I think, than they are now. But here it is, folks. Proof positive. 
There was no massive plummet. Timeless children did not kill the show. Jody Whitaker did not come to your house on Christmas on New Year's Day and eat your cat. And Chris Chibnall did not poison the minds of your children and beat them over the head with candy canes until their brains splayed out on the beautiful New Year's Day snow. It didn't happen. Doctor Who, most watched program on the day for the BBC. Bam. With a, oh, by the way, here's one thing they didn't mention. From the, you know, that night, a 21% share of the viewing audience. Do you know how many American network executives would give their right testicle for a 21% share of the viewing audience? Do you know how many program executives would sell their firstborn child for a 21% share of the viewing audience? But of course, Doctor Who's failing, it's plummeting, it's being killed by Chibnall and Whitaker. They're kind of like the new Voorhees Myers, you know, duo of the universe. Okay, Whoopi Goldberg, I want to be an American Doctor Who. Reveals she hopes to be cast as the next Time Lord and spoke to show icon Tom Baker about the job. Here's the thing. With the fact that we finally had a female doctor, a lot of guys are going, the doctor must now always be British. And I'm like, I can see where you're going there because the program was, of course, born in the UK. But I got some sad news for you guys. Something weird happened. Doctor Who has been adopted by the world. It ain't just your child anymore. You've got foster parents from all over the planet. And that is the fandom. The people who truly love the show. Not some hobbit from another bobbit who's sitting out there shouting about how it sucks. I'm talking about the people who genuinely still love and, and, you know, this program. So, it could happen. I hate to tell you some bad news. Maybe not now. Maybe not two years from now. Maybe not five years from now. Maybe someday it will, because Doctor Who, no matter what happens on the TV, you know, because of big finish, books, copy, you know, comics, Doctor Who's eternal now, baby. And it didn't take the timeless children to do that. It took the fandom and their love of the show. Oh my God, I went off on a soliloquy. I'm a, ah, ah, I used the word like soliloquy. Ah, okay, let's, all right, let's move on. Okay, I want to be an American Doctor Who, she reveals... And here's the thing, you know, Whoopi is getting on a bit, but hey, she's still running around out there. The thing of the matter is this, when she find out, finds out, well, let me get this straight. You want me to do how many months of this show and you're only going to pay me 240 k I think Whoopi makes 240 k in the bathroom while she's doing the view. Uh, I'm like, it's just, uh, okay. And here's one of my favorites, a little piece from the Independent. Having vanquished the idiots who mocked her arrival, it would be a shame if Jodie Whittaker left Doctor Who. And the consolation is that, as so often with previous regenerations, there are plenty of fine candidates who could take over, and then he goes into that a bit. What made me die laughing was somebody earlier this week, once again on Facebook, or Fact Check Book, whatever you want to call it this week, was sitting there going on about the fact that so many fans are going on about choices for her replacement shows how much Jodie Whittaker lacked impact as the doctor. And I'm like, dude, wake the hell up. I, I even typed a reply. I was like, um, I don't know what planet you've been living on, but since time immemorial, any time a doctor is announced or there's been a rumor that a doctor is leaving, the fans immediately go to, who's going to replace him? I think that's all the way back to like, after Troughton left. But then again, they kind of knew Pertwee was coming in at that point. But you see what I mean? It's always been kind of a tradition that the second someone starts saying, you know, someone legitimate who knows what they're talking about the show, not like someone who's been saying she's been leaving for three years, um, says, look, you know, this could happen. You know, everybody does this. It's not old. It's not new. And it's not definitely not just unique to the case of Jody Whitaker. It's been going on for like 50 years. Okay. All right, BBC confirms Doctor Who's next series will air later this year. And once again, this is going on about what Chibnall has said, that they're going to try to fin you know, air it as soon as they finish it. And what they could do is, like they did one year, where they shot everything pretty much in a predetermined order. And the season started airing while the other half of the season was getting through post-production. And I can't remember, it was one of the Capaldi series. If someone can remind me which one that was, I could have swore that's when it happened. And so it's not unusual. Plus, they're only running eight episodes this year because COVID guidelines. 
And once again, you know, Chibnall Whitaker took the blame for that too, even though it's been stated multiple times that no, they had nothing to do with that decision. It's called, you have to do this, 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 and this X equals Y. What is a mouse when it spins in order to film a show using the modern COVID guidelines, which is not a bad thing. You have to remember, you have a lot of people under your charge you know, cast, crew, you know, support staff, all that stuff, then you don't want any of them getting sick with this crap, okay? It's that simple. All right, Dr. Who fans, show support for Jodie Whittaker amid the exit rumors. And like I said, I'm one of them. I don't know why, you know, people are still being so mean and why they're still saying, aha, we won or something like that. A few people have, and I'm like, dude, she's done three series, and that's been pretty much the formula for New Who, you know, since, you know, after Eccleston left. You know, they come in, they do three years, they leave. Heck, you know, heck, even Pete Davison did three years and got out. You know, Troughton did three years and got out. You know, as a matter of fact, some do call it the Troughton rule of three because he is the one who told Pete Davison, look, do three years and get out. And then Davison told Tennant to do the same thing. So it's been kind of passed from doctors past across the generations. So, hey, all right. Jody Whitt Star Wars fans want Jody Whitaker to play Evar Chris in the High Republic movie. Now, as far as I know, there isn't even one in production. Is there a High Republic movie? Then again, you don't know what's going on with Star Wars these days. Hell, seems like they're making a movie out of everybody. You know, pretty soon it's going to be like, you know, Darth Vader's helmet polisher is going to get a freaking movie. It, it's like, oh, that would be Kylo Ren. <laughs> they want Disney to hire Jodie Whittaker to play this character from the comic series. And there is a good resemblance. You know, you know, Jody, I think can pretty much handle anything when she puts her mind to it. So, you know, and I died laughing too. Somebody tried to also make the case that Jody Whitaker was not an established actress when she got called in the Doctor Who. I'm like, and then he starts running off. Well, she was only nominated for this, this, and this best supporting actress. Blah, blah. I'm like, dude, you're putting your own foot in your mouth at this moment. You have fired a torpedo at your own starship. Okay. It, oh, okay. All right. Dr. Who Sex London Superfan 8 gives doc, give, is given a TARDIS door frame. Now, I love kids, but I hate this. Get this word the hell out of here. I am so tired of hearing the term, term superfan. The kid is a fan. Hey, he's a Whovia. Screw superfan. Get that out of here. If you want to be a superfan... Well, that's DC Comics. That's Superman. That's a whole nother thing. Now, I just don't like that term superfan because I don't think anyone's a better or bigger or more important fan than anybody else. Okay, do mother was told how her Twitter feed exploded after posting images of her son's custom-made TARDIS storeframe. And I, I love this. This is so cool. <laughs> I want one! So be sure to go check that out. Really cool. All right. And, of course, we finish off today... With Jodie Whittaker reveals more about her fears playing the Doctor as a new season drops. And this is mainly her. She talks a little bit about what went on in, you know, the season opener, Revolution of the Daleks. She adds, playing the Doctor with all these classic villains and monsters is amazing. But the Master and I have our own relationship. And apparently she loves Sasha Dewan's you know, character of the Master. She thinks that's her favorite enemy so far. She goes, while the return of the Daleks will be thrilled, will thrill diehards. Whitaker said the Master has always been her favorite villain. She goes, just because the writing and the length of scenes for me and Sasha Dewan were just brilliant. We would have four pages of standoffs. I love the I love his trickery, his revenge, and now he's so quick to switch on you. I found all of that incredible. So, once again, folks, there was no plummet. There was no massive bomb that exploded. There, you know, the timeless children did not murder Doctor Who. Matter of fact, wait a minute though. Just in, I heard the timeless children are going to march on Tokyo because Godzilla needs a break. But uh, I'm not kidding. It's just crazy how many people, I, I, I can understand, you know, you, you feel, you know, your passion for this show in a way, you know, you, you, I can understand you disagree with that. All right. But the problem is this show has changed gears so many times. That if each change were an individual gear, we'd have a gearbox big enough to have like five billion, like, you know, oh, I'll put it to you this way. You could be the Flash and not be able to get through all the gear changes this show's done in the last 57 years. Like, you know, it's like it'd be a transmission the size of a small continent or it, it just, it happens. 
And it's like, I love how, well, such and such did this, such and such did that. And I'm like, well, he shoehorned in more doctors before Hartnell. And I'm like, they did it already. And I love how everybody tries to say, oh, no, no, that don't matter. I said, you're telling me Philip Hinchcliffe don't matter? Oh, dude, I'll get, I'll show you how passionate a fan I am if you keep saying that. But what I'm saying is this. At the end of the day, we all love the show. We all, you know, have our opinions on it. But the problem is, is just because you like or dislike something, don't expect everybody on planet Earth to like or dislike it the same way. I'm telling you right now, if the human race were all the same, we'd be boring as hell. We would. We, we, I'm not kidding. And it's kind of scary because I, I worry about who we model ourselves after. You know, would we all be walking around looking like Justin Bieber, boring as hell? You know, I don't know. I don't even want to contemplate it. Everybody, please take care of yourselves and each other. Wash your hands. Wear your mask. COVID is still out there and it's still running wild. But you know, apparently vaccines are going around. Maybe there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Unfortunately for some guys, the light at that end of the tunnel was Darth Vader. It's a uh, Mandalorian rules, man. Oh, that scene with Luke. But okay, we're going to talk about that on the Omega Files. Please take care of yourselves. You know, be careful. Practice distancing. Stay at home if you got you know, If you don't got to be anywhere. Just remember, you, you don't want to catch this stuff. I've had members of my family who have. Some have gotten off lucky and others haven't. So please be very careful. Yeah, good night.